this makes me very happy. I'm ve that makes me happy that, to think that I was in your past. I was dressed up as Arthur Fonzarelli and like I every other boy at you school. You show great taste. Henry Winkler's acceptance into the Yale School of Drama in 1967 marked a pivotal point in his journey. Yale was known for being one of the most prestigious acting schools in the world, and getting admitted was no small feat. It was a testament to Henry's raw talent and determination. During his time at Yale, Winkler's struggles with dyslexia persisted, but his passion for acting and his ability to adapt allowed him to excel. The Yale School of Drama provided Henry with a challenging yet nurturing environment where he could hone his craft. He immersed himself in various roles, exploring the depths of character work, voice training, and movement. The school's rigorous program pushed him to grow, not just as an actor, but as an individual. It was here that he built upon the confidence he had first discovered in high school and developed his own unique style of performance. Winkler's experience at Yale was transformative in many ways. It exposed him to a wide range of theatrical styles, from classical plays to contemporary works. And it was in this creative environment that he developed a deep understanding of the nuances of acting. His performances were met with critical acclaim from his peers and professors alike. This was a crucial period of self-discovery for Winkler, as he learned how to overcome his dyslexia in new and innovative ways. His inability to easily read scripts was still a challenge, but Winkler found ways to memorize his lines and internalize his characters through repetition and auditory learning techniques. His perseverance paid off when he graduated in 1970 with a Master of Fine Arts degree. Upon graduating from Yale, Winkler moved to New York City to begin his professional acting career. Like many aspiring actors, he faced numerous rejections in the competitive world of theater and television. But Winkler was undeterred. He took on small roles in commercials and off-Broadway productions to gain experience. These early jobs were not glamorous, but they provided valuable exposure and allowed him to network within the industry. Despite the setbacks, Winkler's resolve never wavered. He believed that he was destined for something greater, and he continued to work tirelessly toward his goals. Winkler's big break came in 1973 when he moved to Los Angeles. It wasn't long before he auditioned for a new television show called Happy Days. The show, created by Gary Marshall, was set in the 1950s and centered around the Cunningham family. Winkler originally auditioned for a smaller role, but his undeniable charisma and talent caught the attention of the producers, and he was cast as Arthur the Fonz Fonzarelli, a role that would change his life forever. Initially, Fonzie was supposed to be a minor character, but Winkler's portrayal of the cool, leather-jacket-wearing greaser resonated with audiences. Fonzie quickly became the most popular character on the show, transforming Winkler into a household name. Happy Days premiered in 1974, and Winkler's portrayal of Fonzie skyrocketed the show to immense popularity. The Fonz became an iconic character of the 1970s, and Winkler's catchphrases, such as "I" and his signature thumbs-up gesture, became ingrained in popular culture. Despite the character's tough exterior, Winkler brought a vulnerability to Fonzie that made him relatable. Audiences loved the contrast between his tough guy persona and his warm-hearted nature. Winkler's ability to humanize the character was a major factor in the show's success. During his time on Happy Days, Winkler received several awards and nominations for his work, including two Golden Globe Awards for Best Actor in a television series musical or comedy. His fame, however, came with its own set of challenges. Being typecast as Fonzie was a real concern for Winkler. As much as he appreciated the role that had made him a star, he worried that it would limit his career opportunities in the future. After Happy Days ended in 1984, Winkler faced a period of uncertainty about his future in the entertainment industry. He found it difficult to break away from the Fonzie image as casting directors struggled to see him as anything other than the beloved character he had played for so long. Despite this, Winkler remained optimistic and continued to pursue new opportunities. In the late 1980s and 1990s, he shifted his focus from acting to producing and directing. He formed his own production company and began working behind the camera on a variety of projects. One of his most successful ventures as a producer was the popular television series MacGyver. 
which ran from 1985 to 1992. This was a significant milestone for Winkler, as it allowed him to establish himself in a new role within the industry. He also directed films such as Memories of Me, 1988, and Cop and a Half, 1993, further demonstrating his versatility and talent as a filmmaker. During this time, Winkler also became an outspoken advocate for learning disabilities. After being diagnosed with dyslexia later in life, he realized how much his undiagnosed condition had affected his early years. He used his platform to raise awareness about dyslexia and other learning disabilities, especially for children who, like him, struggled in school. Winkler co-authored a series of children's books called Hank Zipser, which are based on his own experiences growing up with dyslexia. The books, which follow a young boy with learning challenges, became a hit with readers and were praised for their positive portrayal of kids with learning disabilities. Winkler's advocacy work and his efforts to educate others about dyslexia made him a role model for countless children and adults alike. As Winkler entered the 2000s, he experienced a career resurgence, this time embracing his comedic talents in a new generation of television shows. He had a memorable recurring role as Barry Zuckercorn, the hilariously incompetent lawyer, on the cult hit Arrested Development. This role helped introduce Winkler to a younger audience and proved that he was more than just Fonzie. Winkler's ability to reinvent himself and stay relevant in the ever-changing world of television was a testament to his talent and resilience. In 2018, Winkler reached another career high when he won his first Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a comedy series for his role as Gene Cousineau in the critically acclaimed HBO series Barry. This marked a full circle moment for Winkler, who had spent decades in the industry and was finally being recognized for his acting skills in a role that showcased his depth and range. His portrayal of Cousineau, a washed-up acting coach, was both humorous and poignant, and it reminded audiences of Winkler's extraordinary versatility as an actor. Off-screen, Henry Winkler is known for his kindness and generosity. He has been married to his wife, Stacy Weitzman, since 1978, and they have two children together, Max and Zoe. Despite the fame and success, Winkler has remained grounded often attributing his resilience to the challenges he faced early in life. He has been open about the emotional impact of his childhood struggles, and he uses his platform to inspire others to overcome adversity. Today, Henry Winkler is celebrated not just for his contributions to the entertainment industry, but also for his work as an advocate for learning disabilities. He continues to act, produce, and write, showing no signs of slowing down. His journey from a young boy struggling with dyslexia to a beloved Hollywood icon is a testament to his perseverance, talent, and heart. Winkler's story is one of triumph over adversity, and his legacy will undoubtedly continue to inspire future generations. At Yale, Winkler honed his acting skills under the guidance of some of the finest instructors in the field. The university's prestigious Master of Fine Arts program offered an intense, immersive experience demanding both dedication and creativity from its students. Winkler, who had always loved performing, was willing to put in the hard work. He immersed himself in classical training, studying not just acting techniques, but also the theoretical and historical foundations of the craft. This holistic education allowed him to develop a deep understanding of the complexities of performance, from embodying characters to interpreting scripts. The rigorous nature of the training at Yale often pushed Winkler to his limits. The program was competitive with high expectations for each student. As part of the curriculum, Winkler participated in numerous stage productions, ranging from Shakespearean plays to contemporary works. Each production helped him refine his craft, building not only his confidence, but also his stage presence. His natural charm and unique style began to surface, setting him apart from his peers. However, while Winkler was thriving in the demanding environment of Yale's drama program, he was also contending with a significant challenge, his dyslexia. Reading scripts, memorizing lines, and analyzing dense material became monumental tasks. Dyslexia, which had plagued him throughout his academic life, continued to be a barrier. He often struggled with feelings of inadequacy, but his passion for acting helped him push through those moments of doubt. 
Determined not to let his learning disability define his career, Winkler sought creative ways to manage it. He would work tirelessly to memorize lines, using physical movements or visual cues to compensate for his reading difficulties. Despite these challenges, Winkler's perseverance and resilience paid off when he graduated with a Master of Fine Arts degree in 1970, a monumental achievement given the obstacles he had overcome. Armed with his prestigious Yale degree, Winkler set his sights on a career in television and film, eager to make a name for himself. In 1970, he moved to New York City, the hub of American theater, to pursue acting full-time. The city, however, presented its own set of challenges. Winkler, like many young actors, faced a competitive industry where auditions were plentiful, but roles were hard to come by. Initially, he struggled to land significant parts, often relying on small roles in off-Broadway productions and television commercials to make ends meet. This period in New York was difficult, both financially and emotionally. Winkler lived hand to mouth, working multiple odd jobs to sustain himself while juggling auditions. The uncertainty of when his next paycheck would come or whether he'd book a role weighed heavily on him. Despite these struggles, Winkler never lost faith in his abilities. He remained optimistic and steadfast, believing that if he worked hard and stayed dedicated, a breakthrough would eventually come. His time in New York helped him build resilience, develop a thick skin, and refine his craft through small but valuable opportunities on the stage. By the early 1970s, sensing that more opportunities existed on the West Coast, Winkler made a pivotal decision to move to Los Angeles, a city synonymous with the television and film industry. Los Angeles proved to be a turning point in Winkler's career. He began to secure minor roles in TV shows and small films, slowly building a portfolio. It was in this city of dreams and reinvention that Winkler's moment of destiny arrived. In 1973, Winkler auditioned for a role that would forever change his life, Arthur Fonzi Fonzarelli on the ABC sitcom Happy Days. The character of Fonzi was initially conceived as a small supporting role, a stereotypical greaser with a tough exterior and not much depth. However, Winkler's audition blew away the producers. He approached the character with a blend of charisma, vulnerability, and coolness that hadn't been anticipated. He transformed Fonzie from a mere caricature into a nuanced figure, a leather-clad biker with a heart of gold, someone who was tough on the outside but had a moral compass that endeared him to viewers. The producers, recognizing Winkler's potential, expanded the character's role, making Fonzie a more central figure in the storyline. As Happy Days gained popularity, so did Fonzie, quickly becoming the show's breakout character. His signature, aye, catchphrase, along with his iconic thumbs up gesture, became cultural phenomena. Soon, Winkler found himself a household name with Fonzie's leather jacket, motorcycle, and rebellious charm symbolizing coolness for an entire generation. The success of Fonzie catapulted Winkler to a level of fame that few actors achieve in their lifetimes. Fonzie became more than just a television character. He was a cultural icon. Posters of Winkler in his Fonzie persona adorned the walls of millions of teenagers, and his likeness was used in merchandise ranging from action figures to lunchboxes. Despite the character's bad boy image, Fonzie's underlying goodness resonated with viewers. He wasn't just a symbol of rebellion, he was a loyal friend, someone with a moral code that valued kindness, loyalty, and friendship. Off-screen, Winkler handled his newfound fame with grace and humility. Unlike many stars who might let such success go to their heads, Winkler remained grounded. His colleagues and fans alike admired him, not only for his talent, but for his warmth, kindness, and sense of humor. While he enjoyed the success of Happy Days, Winkler never allowed it to define him as a person. When Happy Days ended its decade-long run in 1984, Winkler found himself at a career crossroads. Many actors who become synonymous with a single role often struggle to transition into new opportunities. Rather than continuing to seek out roles similar to Fonzie, Winkler chose to reinvent himself. He shifted his focus to producing and directing, recognizing that he could still tell compelling stories without being in front of the camera. This decision led to a new chapter in Winkler's career, one that saw him flourish behind the scenes. 
He became a successful producer and director, working on a variety of television shows and films. Some of his notable works during this period include producing MacGyver and directing episodes of shows like Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Clifford's Puppy Days. Winkler's success behind the camera proved that his talent wasn't limited to acting. Henry Winkler's decision to focus on producing and directing after years of iconic on-screen performances marked a significant shift in his career. By the mid-1980s, Winkler had already made a lasting impact as the Fonz, but he sought new challenges and opportunities to further explore his creative ambitions. In 1984, he co-founded Winkler Rich Productions, a move that allowed him to control more aspects of television and film production. This leap into the business side of Hollywood proved to be a wise decision. One of his company's early successes was the action-adventure series MacGyver, which became a pop culture phenomenon during its seven-season run from 1985 to 1992. The show's inventive protagonist, known for his resourcefulness and reliance on brain power over brawn, became an emblem of problem-solving in mainstream media and remains a beloved character decades later. Winkler didn't limit himself to producing. His directorial ventures, while not as high profile as his acting, further solidified his place in Hollywood's creative fabric. Notable films he directed include Memories of Me, 1988, a touching comedy drama starring Billy Crystal, and Cop and a Half, 1993, a family-friendly film that showcased Winkler's ability to blend humor with heartwarming narratives. These experiences behind the camera enriched his understanding of storytelling, expanding his versatility within the industry. Though his directorial efforts were met with mixed critical reception, they underscored his desire to step out of the shadows of his previous roles and explore new creative territories. Even as his production and directorial endeavors flourished, Winkler never fully stepped away from acting. After spending years typecast as the cool, leather-jacketed Fonzie, he actively sought out roles that would allow him to showcase his range. In the 1990s, he successfully reinvented himself as a character actor, embracing quirky and comedic roles. His portrayal of Barry Zuckercorn, the hilariously inept lawyer in the cult, hit Arrested Development, was a standout. The role, which became iconic in its own right, demonstrated Winkler's sharp comedic timing and introduced him to a new generation of fans unfamiliar with his earlier work. His ability to poke fun at his own image and seamlessly integrate into an ensemble cast of eccentric characters was a testament to his skill and longevity as an actor. One of the most profound chapters in Winkler's life was his advocacy for children with learning disabilities. As someone who grew up struggling with undiagnosed dyslexia, Winkler understood the challenges faced by children who felt misunderstood in traditional educational settings. His diagnosis in adulthood gave him the clarity and confidence to address these issues publicly. In collaboration with Lynn Oliver, he co-authored the Hank Zipser series of children's books. Based on his own experiences, the series follows the life of Hank, a bright yet academically challenged boy navigating school and life with a learning disability. The books resonated with children and parents alike, praised for their humor, honesty, and portrayal of overcoming adversity. Beyond the success of the books, Winkler's efforts helped destigmatize learning disabilities, offering hope and representation for countless children who struggled like he did. Winkler's commitment to raising awareness for dyslexia extended beyond writing. He became an outspoken advocate speaking at schools and organizations to inspire children and families facing similar challenges. His advocacy earned him numerous awards and accolades, including an Honorary Officer of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, in 2011 for his services to children with special educational needs in the UK. The honor recognized not just his work in literature and education, but the broad impact of his tireless efforts to uplift those who felt marginalized by learning disabilities. A pivotal moment in Winkler's acting career came in 2018 when he won his first Primetime Emmy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his role as Gene Cousineau in HBO's Barry. Playing an eccentric, washed-up acting coach, Winkler delivered a layered performance that combined humor, vulnerability, and emotional depth. His portrayal of Gene, 
a mentor navigating his own failures while guiding a morally conflicted student, was lauded as one of his finest performances. Winning the Emmy was a crowning achievement, representing not only his individual talent, but also his ability to transcend the Fonzie persona and remain relevant in a rapidly evolving industry. The role of Gene Cousineau demonstrated that Winkler's range as an actor had grown more dynamic over the years, and it cemented his status as a respected figure in both comedic and dramatic acting. Outside of his professional accomplishments, Winkler's personal life has been a source of stability and joy. He has been married to Stacy Weitzman since 1978, and their enduring marriage is a reflection of the strong values he holds. Winkler's family life is often spoken of with great pride, and he has consistently emphasized the importance of balancing his career with time spent with his loved ones. Despite the pressures of fame in Hollywood, Winkler has managed to keep his personal life grounded, something many of his colleagues admire about him. Winkler's generosity and kindness are as legendary as his acting. Whether working on set or participating in charity work, his reputation as one of the nicest people in the industry is well known. His charitable efforts extend beyond education, as he has supported numerous causes over the years, including cancer research and children's hospitals. His sense of gratitude and humility has always been at the core of his public persona, contributing to the affection with which he is regarded by fans and colleagues alike. As he continues to take on new projects, act, and write, Henry Winkler's legacy is one of resilience, creativity, and deep empathy. His ability to reinvent himself, overcome personal and professional challenges, and give back to the community speaks volumes about his character. Whether as Fonzie, Gene Cousineau, or Hank Zipser's creator, Winkler has shaped television, film, and literature in ways that will be remembered for generations. His story is a remarkable example of how perseverance, humor, and kindness can shape a long, successful career in Hollywood.